Okay, this sermon is entitled, Bible Teachers That Get Everything Wrong. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 132 reads, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swear unto the Lord, and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob, Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. Now before I get into the, the crux of the sermon here, I'd like to preface by saying that there are lots of false prophets out there that are just basically experts or pundits at being double talkers. They are duplicitous and they're ambivalent and they have a double message. They have a message that negates a clear message or contradicts a clear message. And a lot of these people will say stuff like, we believe that salvation's by grace through faith. But, if you're truly saved, you'll have good works. And see, these people are not deliberately, you know, teaching... They, are, they actually they are deliberately teaching wrong, but this is no mistake that they're, that they're being double-talkers. Because, number one, this is how Satan, you know, deceives people. He gets people to listen to teachers that seem to get the message right half the time. But then, in reality, they get the message wrong, and it's basically a cover-up for their false teaching. It's like... They want to say, well, we're not teaching salvation by works, but if you're truly saved, you'll have the works. But see, that's really the same thing as just teaching it by works. And either way, it's still a lie, because you can't add works in the back door or at the front door. You have to basically disregard works altogether whenever you preach the gospel and focus only on the finished work of the cross. Now, a lot of these teachers are very subtle and sly, and some of them are a little more ignorant about how they teach. And I've heard some of them overtly say stuff like, we believe that salvation is by grace through faith, but there's a necessity of repentance and holiness. Now, that is just a, an, an absolute contradiction. That tells you these people do not really believe that salvation is by grace through faith. And what they're really trusting in is their own personal repenting of sins and holiness, something they, something they don't even have. According to the Bible, there is none righteous, no, not one, and yet these people are trusting in something that doesn't even exist. And that's what they're really trusting in. They're not trusting in Jesus Christ alone. And these people are unsaved who teach this. Because if you're really trusting in Jesus Christ alone, you don't add any other necessity, like repentance and holiness. Why would you add something like that if you're already saved by what Jesus Christ has already accomplished? There's no need to do that. But see, an unsaved person sees a need for that because they're not yet saved. They think that the true gospel message is only half of the message. And their other half that they're adding is actually going to damn them to hell, even though they don't believe that. Well, let's move on to the false prophets out there that just get everything wrong. There are people out there that they teach every single thing wrong. It's like it just everything that comes out of their mouth is completely erroneous, completely mendacious, completely, you know, fallacious. And the reason why, number one, is because these people, for the most part, are not saved. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 8 talks about people having no truth or no light in them. And that's why they speak wrongfully about everything. Okay, number two, the second reason is they're probably using a false Bible, a false translation. They're not using the King James Version. They're using an NIV or an NAS or an RSV or whatever. Whatever the initialism or acronym is, it's a false Bible because it's something that the devil came up with. Okay, the third reason why people get everything wrong is because they're not sticking to the Bible at all. And they're using basically the rhetoric that they've heard their whole life from other false prophets, phrases that come out behind the pulpit, you know, all the time, like, repent of your sins. Turn from sin to the Savior. Make Christ the Lord of your life. Give, you've got to give your life to Christ. Who's ever heard that? It's completely backwards. Okay? These teachings are not just wrong, they're backwards. Believing that you can lose your salvation is not only not believing the Bible, it's believing the exact opposite of what the Bible says. And it's a total false message. It's blasphemy. So, one of the reasons why people are teaching everything wrong is because they're just going by what they've heard. They're going by what their church has taught. When we need to stick with the Bible and what, and what it says verbatim, Okay, the next reason is there's no foundation of grace in their teaching. Well, false prophets will leave grace out because they have no grace, because they've received no grace. Grace needs to come first. It needs to take, it needs to take precedence. 
In salvation, grace comes first. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay, God's grace comes first, and then our faith, and then we're saved forever. But God offers the grace up first. Jesus died for our sins way before we were even born. And therefore, salvation was already offered to us 2,000 years ago. And now we're saved by grace, and if people leave the grace out, then the whole message gets mixed up. Okay, when you leave grace out, you'll have a tendency to gravitate towards, you know, works and the law. And you'll put each other back under bondage, like these Judaizers did in, in the book of Galatians. So we need to understand that grace precedes everything else. Number five is the people are not rightly dividing the Word of God. They're, they're just going into the Word of God and they're trying to harmonize. You cannot harmonize two antithetical concepts, like grace and works. People will say stuff like, well, it's by grace, but you got to have the works in there too. I've heard this one false prophet say that it's like a bicycle. He said, grace is like the front wheel. Works are like the back wheel. You have to have both for the bicycle to work. And I thought to myself, no, grace is like the front wheel. Faith is the back wheel. You don't have works to get the, the bicycle going. Okay, according to the Bible, works are just a stumbling block or a stumbling stone, and works would negate or cancel out grace. So we have to rightly divide the Word of God. We can't just go into the book of John and start reading a bunch of salvation verses and then try to compare that to James, which talks about having works. You have to rightly divide. You have to separate the two concepts. Okay, and James is not evangelistic anyway. It's written to believers. So we don't even need to be going to James for that. Okay, so basically what we have are people that are not saved, people using the wrong Bible, people clinging to their tradition, or their man-made verbiage, people that have no foundation in the doctrine of grace, and they're not rightly dividing, and what we get is a big cocktail of confusion and a bunch of false teaching, end over end. Now let's take a look at one verse here real quick, and let's take a look at and see what causes certain people to have an understanding, and what causes some to not. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 7 reads, Consider what I say, Okay, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Notice it's not just understanding in some things, or a partial understanding, it's understanding in all things. Whenever a person is saved, the Holy Spirit indwells them, and, and basically tells them what they need to know. So it's God who gives people the understanding. Okay, that's why he says, consider what I say. It's God's word. And the Lord will give thee an understanding in all things. And that's the difference between a false prophet who has no understanding versus a true prophet of God who has a full understanding of things. So we need to watch out for these fakes and expose them. And that's all I have. Go ahead and close in prayer. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.